Hello everyone, welcome you all once again to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. We have been looking into problems and finding right solutions with the combination of uh, data taken from more than one spectroscopic uh, methods. So let me continue solving more problems in this lecture as well. So I have a problem here, following four compounds are put in four unlabeled vials and some information is given about that 1H and 13C NMR spectra. So now we have to identify by looking into the information that is provided for right or appropriate molecules. So here four molecules are there, they are all chlorodirutis of propane, 1, 1 dichloropropane, 1, 2 dichloropropane, 2, 2 dichloropropane and 1, 3 dichloropropane. It seems with the 2 chlorine and propane, we have looked into almost all four possible isomers. So now some information is also given here, first what we should do is, let us draw the structure once after drawing the structure, we have to identify how many different type of signals are there in 1H NMR as well as 13C NMR spectra in each case. So first let us focus our attention on 1H NMR of first molecule here, this is 1,1 dichloropropane. If you see here, we have all the three hydrogen atoms are different as a result in 1H NMR we expect three signals and also in 13C also we anticipate three signals here and then if you look into most D shielded is this one. So this one if you look into this here, it should give a triplet coupling with this one. So that information also let us write it down here. So the lowest field signal is a triplet here, this one. This information let it be there. Now we shall move on to the second one, 1, 2 dichloropropane, again here three signals are there in case of both 1H as well as 13C and if you look into this one here, this is the lowest field signal. This one is coupled equally with these two, as a result it would show six lines or it is, okay, six lines. So now let us look into this molecule here, of course you can see rotation is there, C2 axis of rotation as a result only half we should consider. So these two are identical, only one signal will be there and then two carbon signals will be there here, okay. only one signal. This is unique compared to the rest of them because 3, 3, 3, 3 here 1, 2. Now let us look into it, again we have C2 axis of rotation and then here we have two type of signals, methylenes with chlorines on both sides and this methylene. And then of course, if you look into the NMR of uh, signal of this one, this would show a quintet and then these two will show a triplet. This should be like this and then two signals will be there. So this is also, uh, now this one is the lowest one is also a triplet now. So now with this one, we have to identify and tick the corresponding chloroderivative from these four columns. So now for your information, I have provided 1H NMR that had simulated as well as 13C NMR for each compound. You can see here a triplet is there and for this one quintet is there and then we have a triplet here. This is for 1,1 one, one here. So, so this one would show with both are coupled equally 4, so 5 lines it is showing and then this is showing a triplet and this also showing a triplet here. And then we have 1, 2, 3 signals are there. And then we look into here, this one, of course this one is the lowest one, this will couple with both of them, as a result it shows 6 lines. And then this geminal coupling is there, as a result you can see here it is going like this, so there is a first, second order splitting is there. And then we are seeing for this one a, a doublet here. And then of course here 3 are there, 1, 2, 3 and here also 1, 2, 3 signals are there. So now 3 signals between 0 to 5, lowest field signal is, is a triplet, so that information given is for this molecule here. And similarly here, this gives a 6 lines, so information provided is this one. And in case of this here, this shows a singlet 1H NMR and then we see 
two thirteen C signals, and in this case, this one show a quintet here, and then these two would show triplet here, and then for this one, the lowest one is a triplet, and then two signals are there. That means here one singlet at one point two, this is two two dichloropropane, and here it is one three dichloropropane. So now we shall come back to this. The answer for the first one is 1, 2 dichloropropane, answer for the second one is 2, 2 dichloropropane, answer for the third one is 1, 3 dichloropropane and then for the last one answer is 1, 1 dichloropropane. So this is how we can use this information, draw the structure, look into the symmetry and identify how many different distinct groups are there and then arrive at the answer. It is very simple, right? Now let us look into another example here. With respect to the 1 H NMR spectrum of C 10 H 12 O 2, answer the following questions. So now just look into carefully here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signals are there here apart from TMS. TMS is a reference that is at 0. We have 5 signals are there. So now how many discrete groups of proton signals are there? except reference is answer is 5 here. So then what is the multiplicity of the highest field signal? Highest field signal is here, this one highest field signal, most shielded one close to TMS that is triplet. So this should be a triplet. And then the sample has a singlet at 3.8 ppm, its value in hertz is if the ppm to convert into hertz, what we have to do is we have to multiply that by field strength 90. So 3.8 into 90 would give you the hertz that is 342 hertz. So now what structural feature is suggested by the singlet at 3.8? So 3.8 if you look into it, so this is 3.8. So this one is not coupled with anything and we have oxygen probably the options are given here. Okay, we have to identify which one. So now since it is not coupled with any other proton that means there is some electronegative atom comes in between uh, two carbon atoms and here obviously we have other heteroatom is oxygen so it has to be OCH3. Next predict which of the other signals is coupled to the quadrate at 2.9 ppm. So let us look into quadrate at 2.9 ppm. So we have a quadrate and if quadrate is there in the neighborhood there should be three protons. So for example, if you consider CH2, CH3 and if you are looking into this one, this would be a quadrate and this will be a triplet. Okay. So then we have to find out which is coupled with this one. Here coupling constant values are not given, but simply looking into the signals and the separation of the individual lines in these multiplets, we should be able to tell that it is coupled with this one, that is 1.2. So next, Predict the number of protons present in each signal, 7.9, 7.9, 2 are there. So that means number of protons here is 1 and here also 1 and then in case of 6.9, this is 6.9 and then 3.8, 3.8, 3, .8, 3, .8, 3. Yeah, by integration we should be able to 3 and then 2.9, uh, 2 and then 1.2, 3. So now with this information, we have to identify what molecule it is. What we can do is hydrogen index deficiency we can look into it. So that would say uh, 11 minus 6 equals 5. So 5 indicates one ring is there plus 4 double bonds are there. So this information is there. With this information and by looking into these 5 different type of signals, then one ring is there, it has to be aromatic group. something like this and then we have two identical ones in the aromatic region if they are coming two identical ones are there that means probably this one, this one, this one we should consider these two are one type and these two are another type so it goes about four protons and then CH3, CH2, CH3 is there so that means this one here three and then here this one is there that indicates there may be something like So another one should be something like this. If we count now, so 12 are there, H12 and then O2 
and then we have C 10. So, that means here 1, 2, 3, 4 double bonds are there and then one ring is there. So, this also satisfies rule whatever we are talking about hydrogen deficiency 4 is satisfied and then these are identical now and these two are coupled with this to show two doublets this one doublet and this one doublet they are very minute differences there in the chemical shape they are coming together and then this is showing a singlet here and then this is showing a quadrate and then this is showing a triplet here. So, this is the molecule. So, this is how we can identify the molecule and then we can also answer simply by looking into even before identification of the molecule we should be able to answer the questions they are listed here. Now, let us look into another uh, uh, problem related to phosphine complex of rhodium coordination number 5 and rhodium is in plus 1 state because 4 trimethyl phosphines are there neutral ligands and then we have one methyl is there. So, rhodium is in plus 1 state. So, for this one very interesting two spectra are recorded one at room temperature and another one at minus 80. Interesting is at room temperature a doublet is observed simple doublet is observed and at minus 80 a doublet of doublets and quartet of doublets that means two signals are observed. So, now we have to see what are the right geometry that explains these two kind of situations in case of 31 p NMR. Well, when we have coordination number equals 5, only two options are there. One is it can be square pyramidal and other one is trigonal bipyramidal. So, now since it shows a doublet and also we should remember the fact that 103 rhodium is I equals half and it is 100 percent abundant. And then usually rhodium to phosphorus coupling comes in the range of 150 to even 300 hertz. That means much larger coupling. This doublet explains probably all four trimethyl phosphines are equally coupled to rhodium resulting in the form signal which looks like a doublet. So, that means we have to write a right kind of structure in which all four trimethyl phosphines are identical. We just look into it. This is a square pyramidal in which all the four phosphines are in the plane and they are identical. So, here they couple with this one to show a doublet here. So, now let us look into another example. Now, doublet of doublet means probably it is not retaining at minus 80, it is going to geometrical isomerism, and other alternative is trigonal bipyramidal. When we go for trigonal bipyramidal, we have several options. Let us write one or two options to begin with. So, this is trigonal bipyramidal. I have drawn one isomeric form where all three trimethyl phosphines are in plane and one in axial position. So, now we just look into this one here. These three are identical and they first couple with rhodium to give a doublet and now they are equally coupled with the axial one, another doublet comes here. So, this is 1j rhodium phosphorus coupling and then this spacing and this spacing is 2j pp coupling here. So, we get a doublet of doublet, yes doublet of doublet is there. It looks like uh, this is the right structure I have drawn. Next let us look into uh, this is for equatorial I will put E. Let us look into axial one now. So, now this would first couple with rhodium
and then it is coupled with the 3, 3 means you can use 2 n i plus 1 rule again. Four, four lines should be there. So, that means basically so this spacing any spacing we take this is 2 j t p. So, quadrant of doublets. So, this is how you can explain and draw a spectrum and then understand the problem here. At uh, minus 80, it shows two signals having trigonal bifurcation geometry, one is doublet of doublets and other one is quadrate of doublets. So, uh, at room temperature, it converts into isomerases to square pyramidal geometry having all four trimethylphosphines in the plane and shows just coupling with rhodium. So, it is a doublet. Now, let us look into another example. This I think I already discussed this one while looking into NMR problems. Let me recall again and tell you about 195 platinum NMR, how to understand and interpret. So, a spectrum is already given here, 195 platinum NMR spectrum and the structure is also given, only you have to interpret and explain why they are giving two doublets of equal intensity. And here if you just look into it, 115n is already designated. So, for this one i equals half, this is coupling, fine. First, let us say it couples with 15n. So, now we have to see this is split into triplets. If triplets means we do not have anything in the close vicinity, we have carbon, carbon cannot show, carbon is 13 C is only 1 percent. So, you cannot see, if at all if you see only you can see satellites, but with this that information is not provided. The next target is 2 bond away from platinum is n, probably if it is not labeled anything, we can assume this is 14 n and 14 n we have i equals 1. If i equals 1, 2 n i plus 1 will give you 3 lines. So, this one would be split into 3 lines each one and of equal intensity. If you compare this one with here, both look identical. So, that means this platinum compound is coupled both with 15 n, 1 bond coupling as well as 2 bond coupling 14 n. First, it splits into a doublet and each line will be further split into triplet of equal intensity. So, this is how you can interpret and understand the coupling constants and uh, eventually the data that is provided. Now, let us look into another example here. So, interpret the spectrum below for the compound that is shown here is a platinum compound again, four coordinated one, justify all splittings. So, spectrum is given here and also the question is when four coordination is there and platinum here, we have to see whether it is cis or trans. Let us write first trans here. If you just look into this compound here, this is a square planar complex. If I do C2 axis of rotation, both the phosphorus in the trans isomer are magnetically and chemically equivalent. And if you look into phosphorus NMR, they just show a singlet that is singlet and then platinum satellites we will see. So, this will be 1J TTP. So, that means it is not has to do nothing with 13th NMR spectrum. And then of course, platinum 195 platinum abundance is 34 percent that is NMR active with I equals half and rest 196 is 66 percent and that is 196 that I equals 0. Three signals are there which are these signals and also if you look into the chemical shift range, it appears like probably uh, it is a 1H NMR spectrum. If it is 1H NMR spectrum, how it should look like? So, first we should look into methyl group. And if the methyl group 3 hydrogen atoms are there and they couple with these two to give a triplet here. So, they give a triplet.
and then it would couple with platinum. When it couples with platinum now, what would happen? This NMR active one, when it is coupled, then it will be split into a doublet. So, that means basically you will see something like this here. This pattern is more or less same for all of them. So, one is for this methyl triplet, this is for I equals 0 and this is for I equals half. This is you assume 196 platinum and these two are for 195 platinum. This is the species, this PT H coupling. So, now this is this the pattern is same for all, but we have to look into number of hydrogen atoms are this is 3. So, this is 1 here and then here 6, 6, 12 are there and this is 12 and then here 4, we have 4. That means all of them are behaving in a similar way and all of them are coupled with platinum 34 percent showing singlet and then probably that is split into triplet and then this one also singlet that is split into a triplet here. So, this is how you should be able to explain the NMR. This NMR given is for 1H NMR that represents CH3, ethylene, 4 protons and then ratio would be if you just look into it 3 is to 4 is to so here is 12. So, you can see 3 is to 3 is to 4 is to 12 or 16 is essentially same. So, this is 1H NMR data is provided here. So, let me stop now and come back with more examples in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.